Hello and welcome to this video in which I will hopefully pretty quickly introduce Boolean logic gates. I say pretty quickly because there's some interactive exercises you're going to be able to do afterwards that will contain much more interesting detail. But sometimes it's nice to have a little video to introduce things, so let's get on with it. Now the story so far. So far we've introduced MOSFETs, which are these fabulous electronically controlled switches. And so on the left hand side we've got this NMOS MOSFET. Uh, which if I put more than about 1.2 volts in at the gate, that's in at the part on the left hand side, then the right hand, uh, the right part of it will start to conduct, become a conducting pathway. But if I put less than about 1.2 volts in at the gate on the left, then the right hand part of it won't conduct and it'll be like that disconnected. And on the right hand side of the screen, we've got a P MOSFET. Uh, which uh, is kind of like the other way around. If I put a low voltage into the gate, then the right hand part of it will conduct. And if I put a high voltage, a logic one into the gate on the left hand side, uh, then that won't conduct. And we can see that little circle on the gate to indicate it. And I want you to have in the back of your head, when you see those little circles, think inversion, think um, there's something about low switching this on or putting uh, inverting the signal anyway. Now, let's have a look at a circle using these. So in our first example, we've got VDD, which is our high voltage line, uh, connected through a PMOS MOSFET and then through an NMOS MOSFET down to ground. And our output is connected in the middle. And we've got this input A, which I've shown twice. Um, some of our later diagrams are going to get a little bit more complicated. And so rather than showing wires all over the place where I need an input more than once, I've just shown it more than once. And on the right hand side of the screen, we've got this little table, which is called a truth table. And that is a table showing, uh, well, for this input, this is the output I'll get. And so we've got one input, A, and that, that input A can have values 1 or 0. So we've got two rows in our table, but we've not filled in the table yet. So let's fill it in. Let's first of all have a look at what happens if I turn A to logic 1. So I turn it to um, a voltage close-ish to VDD. Well, if I give it this logic one, then the uh, P MOSFET at the top switches off because that one switches on with low voltages. Uh, but the N MOSFET at the bottom switches on because that switches on with higher voltages, voltages above 1.2 volts. And so now we've got a conducting pathway between our output pin and ground. And so our output is connected to ground, a low voltage, and so we get a zero out. What happens if we put a zero in as a, 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 a voltage low in as a? Well, in that case, the P MOSFET at the top starts conducting because that switches on when we put low voltages in. But the N MOS at the bottom, uh, that switches off. That stops conducting because N MOSs, uh, they, they switch on when you put logic one into them. And so now we've got a conducting pathway between our output pin and VDD, our high voltage line. And so we get a logic one at the output. Uh, the NMOS FET at the bottom that is not conducting means there is not a conducting pathway between the output pin and ground. So if we look at the truth table on the right hand side, well, if we put a one in, we get a zero out. If we put a zero in, we get a one out. So this is a not gate. So this symbol at the bottom in, on the left hand side uh, is the logic gate symbol for a NOT gate, uh, a right facing triangle with a little circle on the output. And as I said, where you see those little circles, think something about inversion. Well, it's, it's the bubble on the output of a NOT gate. Uh, on above the gate, I've shown uh, three ways of writing this down if you want to use it in an equation. So the one on the left, which has a stroke with then a little bit facing down at the end, kind of like if you took a staple and broke off the left hand leg. Uh, that is the one that you'll see on many modern mathematics courses, discrete mathematics courses. Uh, the one in the middle, A with a bar over the top, um, that one tends to be used by engineers because it's quite nice and compact. Uh, if we have three inputs, A, B, and C, and we want to talk about the case where A is one, B is zero, and C is one, we can say A, B, bar, C. So it's quite nice and compact to write. Uh, the one on the right hand side, uh, the tilde, um, that uh, it dates all the way back to the 1800s and piano that was also used by Whitehead and Russell. Um, that one programmers quite like as well. And the reason they quite like it is, well, if you look at that squarish one on the left hand side uh, that's on many modern maths courses, you'll notice you don't have a key for it on your keyboard. 
but most keyboards do have a tilde uh, key on them and so that one is quite typeable and uh, the all these all three notations have been used by mathematicians down the centuries most of these date, date from the 1800s um, but the fact that you have a tilde key on your keyboard and you can type it uh, means that many programming languages have chosen tilde as the bitwise not operator uh, c java many many other languages okay let's move on to our second gate and this one's going to have two inputs so here we've now got VDD connected through uh, two NMOS gates in parallel to our output pin. And then we've got two PMOS MOSFETs in series down to ground. So what's going to happen if we fill in our truth table on the right, which now has two columns, columns for A and B. And we can see that we've got rows for the different possible combinations of values of A and B. So let's turn this to 1-1 one, one first. Well, in 1-1, one, one, the top two NMOS MOSFETs switch on. And so we've got a conducting pathway to VDD through both of them. And we get a 1 at the output. The P MOSFET at the bottom, they've switched off with that logic 1 coming in. And so there is not a conducting pathway to ground. So we've got a 1 at the output. Let's now turn B low, turn B to 0. And we can see that one of the MOSFET at the top switches off, but we've still got a conducting pathway to VDD through the other one. So we still get a one at the output. And we can see that one of the uh, P MOSFETs uh, at the bottom has started conducting. And it started conducting that ground voltage upwards, but only as far as the A P MOS, uh, MOSFET, which isn't conducting, which stops it propagating all, all the way to the output. And so in that case, we still get a one at the output. Uh, if we turn A low and B high, uh, well, this is what it looks like. So it starts connecting, it connects the output to VDD through the B and MOS, uh, MOSFET. Okay, the A P MOS MOSFET is now conducting, but only as far as the B uh, P MOS MOSFET, which is not conducting. And so again, there is no conducting pathway down to ground. Only in the case where A and B are both zero, will those two P MOS MOSFETs that are in series start conducting and give us a conducting pathway to ground, in which case both of the A both the A and the B N MOS MOSFETs at the top are not conducting, and so there's no conducting pathway to VDD. And so we get R0 at the output. So if we look at the truth table for this, we can see well if A or B or both uh, are one, then we get a one at the output. And so this is an OR gate, uh, an inclusive OR gate. But if you just say OR gate, we assume that's an inclusive OR gate. Um, the gate symbol for that is uh, kind of down the bottom on the left hand side. Not hugely well drawn, but never mind. And above it, I have put the uh, three different uh, notations that you are uh, likely to come across in the short term uh, for writing this down as an equation. Uh, the one on the top left, uh, that thing in between the A and the B is not actually a V. It looks a bit like a V. Uh, it's uh, the disjunction operator uh, that is also um, uh, also called the alternator uh, operator. Uh, where well, it's kind of archaically called the alternator operator. Most mathematical tes texts these days will call it disjunction. Uh, but disjunction might be uh, a little bit harder for you to connect with, which is why uh, I suggested uh, alternation might be something that you can remember more easily for OR. Uh, in the middle, well, engineers tend to like to use a plus as their symbol for OR. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that OR, if you think about the priority rules of algebra, uh, engineers tend to use plus for OR and uh, something that looks a bit like a multiplies, uh, either a dot or just writing things together uh, for AND. And it's because OR and AND follow the same priority rules. Uh, as uh, addition and multiplication. But also, if you think about it, and you think about it in terms of just having values that are zero or non-zero, well, zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus non-zero is one. It is non-zero, sorry. Non-zero plus, uh, plus zero is non-zero. Non-zero plus non-zero is non-zero. So if you kind of squint at it right, you can kind of see how they make the connection with, uh, with addition. Uh, but yeah, engineers sometimes like to use a plus as their or symbol. On the right hand side, that is the one that you will see in many programming languages as the bitwise OR operator, uh, which is the pipe character, uh, again, because you have a key for it on your keyboard. 
let's move on. So if that was an OR gate, uh, you can possibly take a guess that this might be an AND gate. And well, if we kind of squint at this one, we can see that VDD is connected through two NMOS MOSFETs to the output pin. So both of those will have to be one for it to produce a one at the output. And there's two PMOS MOSFETs in parallel connecting it to ground. So if either A or B is zero, or both are zero, then we're going to get a conducting pathway to ground and we'll get a zero at the output. And so sure enough, that is what happens. If we put two ones in at the two top N MOSFETs in series, uh, switch on and we have a conducting pathway to VDD. Uh, if we turn either or both of the uh, uh, of the inputs to zero, uh, then we break that conducting pathway to VDD and we make a conducting pathway uh, to ground through one or both of the PMOSFETs at the bottom. And so that is an AND gate. And the symbol for it, again, not terribly well drawn, sorry about that. Uh, the, the gate symbol is at the bottom left. And at the above it, we can see three different ways that you might write this down if you're writing it as an equation. And so in the top left, we have the mathematical conjunction operator, which you might notice is the disjunction operator upside down. And that is its origins. Uh, when the uh, disjoint operator was originally created, um, then the people, the mathematicians that wrote about it, they tended to use a mid dot. Uh, so Piano and various others tended to use a mid dot uh, for the AND operator. But in, in more modern times, it became more popular to use an upside down uh, disjoint operator. Uh, a little mnemonic for it is to think of it as like the N in AND. Uh, engineers tend to like it like a multiplication, so we've got A, B here. You could do A mid dot B, a little dot in the, in, in the middle between them. Uh, again, that is because uh, it uh, has the same kinds of priority rules. Uh, or at least one of the one of the nice things about it. I don't want to say because because that suggests that that's the reason that someone uh, decided that. Um, uh, but it, so it has the same priority rules as multiplication. And another way of kind of thinking about it is well, anything times zero is zero. Anything and zero is zero. So it kind of makes sense to look at that a bit like a multiplication. And on the right hand side, uh, many programming languages use an ampersand as the bitwise and operator. OK, let's move on. That was an AND gate. What would happen if we took an AND gate and we stuck a NOT gate on its output? Well, then we'd have a little equation and we've got three ways of writing that equation shown up the top. We've got the uh, the one that uses the, the mathematical negation operator and the conjun um, conjunction operator on the left hand side. We've got the engineers a, B with a bar over the top to show the inversion. And we've got the programmers tilde brackets A ampersand B. We've got a truth table here where we've got two inputs, but now I've got two columns on the right hand side because I can kind of go down this working out what is going to be output at each stage of my circuit. And this is a pretty simple one to work through. Uh, but so if I take my two ones, then the output of that AND gate, A and B, is going to be one. So the output of the, of the NOT gate, A, B with a bar over the top, is going to be zero. Uh, if I turn uh, either of those uh, A or B to zero, then I should get zeros out of my AND gate, which means I should get a one out of my NOT gate. And again, if I put uh, two zeros into an AND gate, I'll get a zero out. And so I'll get a one out of the NOT gate. And so this is called a NAND gate. Uh, it's uh, an AND gate with an inverted output. And it has its own gate symbol uh, as well, uh, which is like an AND gate with that little inversion uh, circle uh, at the end. Uh, so once again, that little circle, you see that circle, think inversion. And so this is called a NAND gate. But let's do something a little bit more with this. Let us, uh, well, let us show how you can implement this directly in, MOSFET, in MOSFETs. So in this case, what we could say is, well, if um, A and B are both one, then I want it connected to ground. So I'm going to put two N MOSFETs that will switch on when A and B are one in series connecting it to ground. And if either A or B are zero, uh, then I want it connected to VDD, so it'll put a 1 out. And so I have two PMOS FETs in parallel connecting it to VDD. So I can implement this directly as a logic gate, uh, although it doesn't have its own uh, symbol uh, in the equations above. It ends up being not 
A and B. Something else I can do with this. Let us circle those three rows where it is a 1 at the output. And so we've got 1, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 0. And let's do that to just to show you something that is called uh, sum of products form. So what I could say is that this thing is going to produce a 1 in the case AB bar or A bar B or A bar B bar. And so that is a, a, a form of writing the equation down, which is called sum of products. And you can do that for, uh, for any given logic circuit. Uh, but that one looks a little inefficient. I think we can do this a bit more efficiently. Let me take my truth table and flip the bottom two rows around. So you can see now I've got 0, 1 on the bottom row and 0, 0, one row above it. I've just flipped the two rows uh, around how I, in how I show them in the table. Uh, incidentally, if you go down the table, you can see one 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 zero 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 one. You can see we're only show, showing uh, we're only changing one bit at the time at a time, and that's something called gray code. But that's by the by. That's not really what I'm showing you. The reason I flipped these around is to put the two zeros of A together and the two zeros of B together. So I can circle them, and you can see that well, this thing is going to produce a one if a is 0, or it's going to produce a 1 if b is 0. So I could simplify my sum of products form to just say, well, it's a bar or b bar. And now I'd like you to have a look up the top of the slide, because we said this is a NAND gate. So I've got in brackets a, b with a bar all the way over the top. And if we instead go to inverting the inputs, you can see that that turns into a bar or rather than and b bar and so this is an illustration of something called de morgan's law and there's two of them because it works one way around for and gates and one way around for or gates so you see that a b a and b if we invert the output well we get the equivalent of not a or not b if we were to take uh, a or b and invert the output uh, that would be equivalent to saying not a and not b and so this is de Morgan's rules, uh, which are one of the bo Boolean algebraic laws that you'll come across on circuits courses. And there's a little mnemonic for it that works with this notation, which is where you say, break the line, change the sign. Because you can see on the top row, we've got the bar all the way over the A and B. On the right hand side of the equals, though, we've broken it to put the bar just over the A and just over the B. And so we've had to change the sign. We've changed it from an and to an or. And in the one on the bottom, we had got the bar, the line all the way over A, A or B. And then on the right hand side of the equals, we've broken it. So we've got little bars over A and B. And so we've had to change the sign from or to and. And so that's de Morgan's rules. To just kind of help with the mnemonics as well, uh, and because I hadn't shown you the uh, the gate symbol for a NOR gate, uh, on the left hand side I've got the gate symbols for these. So there's a NAND gate, which is an inverted AND gate uh, that we saw. Down below it we have a NOR gate, which is an inverted OR gate. And again, you can see that we get the little inversion bubble on the output. And on the right hand side, and this is just my little mnemonic for helping you to remember where you see those bubbles, think inversion. Well, one way of thinking about Morgan's laws is that uh, if an AND gate on the left hand side is like a an AND gate with an inversion bubble on the output, well, then it's a bit like an OR gate with two inversion bubbles on the inputs. And a NOR gate, if that's an OR gate with an inversion bubble on the output, well, maybe that's equivalent to an AND gate with inversion bubbles on its inputs. Uh, but we don't really use the, right, the symbols on the right hand side. The symbols on the left are the gate symbols that we tend to use for NAND and NOR. One last one uh, that I'm going to show you in this video, there's another one in the exercises, uh, but one last one I'm going to show you in the video is exclusive OR. We talked about inclusive OR, OR gates, which are true if A is true or B is true or both A and B are true. Uh, but what about if A is true or B is true, but ni not neither and not both? And so that is exclusive OR and the gate symbol for it looks like an OR gate with an extra stroke on the left hand side. And so that one's truth table uh, is uh, drawn on the right hand side here. And you can see that we've got a one at the output only for the case uh, where A is high and B is low or A is low and B is high. Or in other words, for A, B bar or A bar B. And that one does have its own uh, 
mathematical operators uh, for writing it down. Uh, so if you're writing it in that kind of mathematical notation of the one on the left, it looks like the disjunction operator with an extra little underline underneath it to show it's exclusive or. If you're using the engineering notation where you have a plus for or, a plus with a circle around it is exclusive or. And in programming, again, they wanted something that they'd got a key for. And so the caret in some languages is the bitwise uh, exclusive or operator. Uh, that said, uh, we'll tend to try and avoid using that too much in notes uh, because it looks a little bit like the mathematical sign for conjunction. Uh, it's just kind of higher up. And so that might be a little bit confusing because it's hard to, to distinguish. Uh, but in several programming languages, the caret is used as the uh, exclusive or bitwise operator. OK, let's end the video there, though there's more interesting things in the interactive exercises.